All right, let's take a look at another equation here to solve. I've got my variable, and I'm subtracting 729. What's the inverse of, of that? Inverse is adding 729. Now, if I do that to both sides, you have to be very careful about what you see on the right side. On the left is just w, but on the right side, on the right side, it's a little bit different, isn't it? You have a positive and a negative, so you know you have to find the difference between these. When you find the difference between two numbers, you need to do subtraction. And any time you do subtraction, it's going to be the larger number minus the smaller number. So it means you need to find the difference between 729 and 448. Show the work on your paper. That way I can see what you're doing. And if you make a small mistake, it won't hurt as much as opposed to you not having any work at all. So 9 minus 8 is 1, and the 72 minus 44 is going to give you 28. So my answer here is 281. What do you guys think? Got to watch your signs. Well, let's talk about the multiplication property. This guy is very similar to the addition property that we just talked about. And it's just another set of uh, equivalent equations. So A equals B is equivalent to the following. It's equivalent to A times C is equal to b times c or instead of multiplying both sides times a number you can divide both sides by the same number it just depends on what you're trying to do to get your variable by itself uh, one of the things we need to note here though is that c does not equal zero. You are not allowed to multiply or divide both sides by zero. It's not very helpful. Now you see this all the time if you ever go to the grocery store. You guys probably don't grocery shop, which is really sad. I don't know how you eat, how you stay alive. But you may see something like this. Oh, things are on sale, two for ten dollars. Wait, how much is just one though? <laughs> You, you know, you do math without thinking about it. You don't want to admit it or else, you know, don't want to upset people. But the way you do that is that you have to divide both sides by 2, right? Because this is understood to be 2 times x. And what's the inverse of multiplying times 2? Dividing by 2. So you get x equals what? x equals 5. Well, that's not too bad, is it? What do you think? Just what you thought it would be? Are you happy? You, you have no emotions. That's great. <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's good. It's really good to have zero emotions. You can go through life and be just like me. How about 8x equals negative 60? I'm doing this because you guys don't respond and you're emotionless. You do what? Divide both sides by 8. And that's going to get my x by itself because what is 8 over 8? One. 1, which is that multiplicative identity. Okay. So what does x equal? I've got negative 60 over 8. Does 8 go into 60 evenly? Say negative seven and a half, or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, if I do this, if I reduce this fraction by four, I get fifteen halves. Now, this answer is perfectly acceptable in terms of a um, of an answer. It's it's exact. It's negative fifteen halves. You also could say 
x equals negative 7 and a half, but you could also say what? 7.5. Negative 7.5. What I want you guys to get in the habit of doing is leaving your answers as improper fractions. If you convert to a mixed number or decimal, you might make a mistake along the way, and it may not be exact. So your answers must be exact for me.